Welcome back, toy fans. This is the Spectre Creative channel on YouTube, hosted by me, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. And today's toy trend video is looking at, well, it's called Attack of the Form Factors. What I mean by that is talking about the emergence of a new trend of taking a shape, a basic shape, and being able to turn that into really any character. And I'm not talking about a character who can become shapes like Plastic Man. He I mean, more something like the Mighty Mug collection from Hasbro, and no, no, I'm not talking about this Mighty Mug collection. This was designed by a spreadsheet, and we'll get more into toys that are designed by spreadsheets in the future. What I'm talking about is the original Mighty Mugs, the ones from about 15 years ago. Uh, it's 2020, by the way, right now, so uh, yeah, for those listening and watching at home in the future. The original Mighty Mugs were what we would literally were the definition of a form factor. They were a basic shape that could really be turned into any character in popular culture without compromising that shape so that it was still recognizable and it worked as a collection. Sure, sometimes you would have to add things like a hat or a backpack or wings or something like that, but this Mighty Mug of Professor Jones Sr. looks just as much as a Mighty Mug as that Captain America one we just looked at. In fact, the fact that they could put out what's called a blank buck, meaning a buck, meaning a, a unpainted version, is sort of just proof in the pudding of how much the, the form factor worked. Now, this is just a basic example. What I want to do as we dive deeper into this is look at other ways companies are using form factors. So, for example, Super 7, a few years back, started producing what they called the uh, reaction figures, which were across the board for all licenses, sports, TV, video games. They had a ton, a ton of licenses for this. And the idea was that they were based on vintage Star Wars figures. They were treating vintage Star Wars figures as a form factor. And while I'll definitely agree this was a really cool d idea on paper, the problem was they used a different type of plastic, and so they missed the fact that when you held a reaction figure, it didn't feel like a vintage Star Wars figure. And tactile feel is a huge part of the emotional connection to a toy. So while it was a cool idea, it didn't work in the long run simply because the wrong plastic was used, and when people picked it up, it didn't have that rubbery feel of the plastic of those true vintage Star Wars figures, so that nostalgic link wasn't connected. And ultimately, this form factor has, for the most part, gone away. They still have a few of them. And some of, you know, they're, they are still on the shelf, but they're not as prominent as they were about five years ago when Barnes & Noble and Toys R Us, and yeah, I know Toys R Us isn't around, but, you know, they carried them in all sorts of brands. So that form factor is kind of on the decline. Another interesting example is what Funko is doing with their Savage World line, where they've taken another vintage form factor and they're looking they're basically applying it again in the same way to lots of different licenses. It's basically that squat buff five inch line, which those of you who watch this channel know that I'm a big Masters of the Universe fan, so this is a vintage Masters of the Universe uh, form factor, a body type, that Funko is trying to apply to lots of different brands. Now, a more successful form factor is something like Pop from Funko. This has been successful simply because fans have embraced it. It's one that they created looking at the trend that Mighty Mug started when, when Hasbro kind of dropped that one. And the fact that fans embraced Funko Pops almost no matter what the license is why it succeeded. You could make any character from Golden Girls to Spider-Man and a Funko Pop is pretty much going to sell. Now, the other thing to look at form factors is when they're kind of overdone. So, you know, here's Greedo here as a vintage figure and a modern figure, but the question is how many Greedo figures are really needed out there at market? Which form factors support Greedo? Which ones work and which ones don't? That's really a question for the end consumer, but we're living in a world where there are now so many different ways of getting Greedo as a toy that the end consumer almost has 
unlimited selection if they want a, a tall one, a thin one, one that dispenses candy, one that is articulated, one that's not articulated, one that works in a collection. They can even have Greedo reimagined as a car. More on that in a moment. You know, or a high-end statue. So there are definitely collectors who collect by the character. I'm one of them. This is my Captain Marvel shelf, and I will not call him Shazam. Sorry, DC. I love classic Captain Marvel, and I usually will always pick him up anytime he looks like the classic 1940s version. But not every character has this kind of following, and not every collector collects this way, which is why understanding the emotional connection between collector and product is so, so important to having successful product. As I said earlier, Funko Pop has succeeded because they've penetrated through that emotional barrier and have created an emotional connection to collectors to try to consume and acquire as many as is possible, representing everything they love in pop culture, transformed into this cool, fun, black-eyed, little squat, you know, character. Going back to what I said earlier about Greedo transformed as a car, so this is the, the the Hot Wheels Star Wars character car line, something I actually worked on right before I left Mattel. But this was always something I, you know, I, I kind of questioned because these are not an action figure. So you can't display it like an action figure or use it like an action figure. But more importantly, they're not a Hot Wheels car because they don't work on track. So they're basically meant for people who like characters but want to see them transformed into cars? Is this something that exists? Are there collectors who want that? We're living in a completely different era of toy collecting, where it's now the era of the form factor, where more and more form factors are being introduced. Some of them are based on proven concepts. I mean, these are W. Britton figures that date back almost 150, 200 years since the company was founded. You know, that's proven. It has a fan following. And the slide before this, those nano metals from Jada are updating that proven form factor. But on the flip side, with licensing at an all-time high, and, and check out my splicing video on this channel, does the world need a Death Star waffle maker and a C-3PO tape dispenser? There's all sorts of ways to license characters. And at the end of the day, what's going to decide what works is the end user, the consumer. The consumer is truly king more than he ever has been in the past, or she. And unless you understand that emotional connection between product, licensing, and consumer, it will be harder and harder to know what product to make and for what license. That's why the emotional connection is the key to making successful toys and to understanding successful form factors. Without that understanding, well, you're pretty much producing, well, you know. So if you're in the business of creating toys, of licensing product, well, for any category, not just toys, Spectra Creative is here to help. What makes us different from any other firm is that we approach all product from an emotional perspective first to understand the connection between consumer and product. We can help you make better product, and better product means better sales and happier consumers. Let us help you today at spectrocreative.com. Thanks for watching.